fresh runny honey um, and some grilled Greek figs. Delicious dish. Fantastic. Join me later, back at the market. Thanks, Arthur. That looks like it's going to be delicious, but before we have dessert, we should have a Greek main dish, I think. Tonya Buxton, you are the lady to do that, aren't you? I am. <laughs> so talk us through the ingredients. You cannot get more Greek than an aubergine. No. Isn't it beautiful? Don't you think the beautiful colours in aubergines are yeah, great? Yeah, I do, I do like an aubergine, and I didn't realise, this is all fact before we start, that it's not a, it's not, um, a vegetable. It's a fruit. It's a berry. It's a berry. Did you know that? Oh, the chefs in the corner. I love your facts. And they're great, aren't they? What have we got in here then? Okay, we are making imambaldi. Imambaldi. Yes, and this is the uh, basic ingredients that we need. Potatoes, onions, aubergine, courgettes, lots of garlic, mm -hmm. uh, some chopped tomatoes yep. in a can. And we've got cinnamon to flavour it with, which most people don't do in no. savoury dishes, but Greeks do a lot. Salt and pepper, you can put some chopped coriander if you want. Okay, so these are your sort of store cupboard essentials, but then if you add bits to it, you can create, well you can have a whole Greek week, couldn't you? You, you, you really to? could, and there's so many dishes, we've only shown a couple here, but there are so many that you could so do with these basics. What are these stuffed aubergines? We call these yemista, which yemista. literally means filled, and we've got courgettes and aubergines stuffed there, so you'd keep the basics, the courgettes, the aubergines, the onions, the garlic, but to that you would add some mincemeat and some rice, a little bit of chopped parsley and just saute it all up. And then scoop scoop out the, the flesh of, of the aubergine, mm -hmm. slice it up, fry it all together so you've got the flesh back in there, pop it in there, pop it in the oven and voila, add some water and you're done. And then the dish that every Brit that goes to Greece for their summer holidays always has on the first night, moussaka. <laughs> moussaka. Moussaka. The accents on the A. Ah. Moussaka. <laughs> Um, uh -huh. We've got a vegetarian moussaka here, but if you wanted, yeah. you could add some minced meat to that. And very simple, same layering process that we're going to be doing here. Okay. But on top of that, you would put a bechamel or a white sauce, a bit of butter, cheese, milk, Cause, and Because the old Greeks love a layering, don't they? they a lot of the they, dishes that you get in Greece are layered. They do like to do their layering, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing here. Okay, now, so what are we doing? For this dish, then? the first thing you need to do, if you can just show those aubergines there, because yep. before you get started, you need to <laughs> do a good job there. You need to is slice them, score them, and salt them because yeah. aubergines have bitter waters. So I'm just I've got my potatoes already on there, mm -hmm. and I'm frying everything up now. This is the traditional way to make it, and this is the, the tasty way to make it. Yeah. But if you are on a bit of a diet or a little bit more health conscious, so it's olive oil, so it is good for you. You can bake everything off in the oven. It takes a little bit longer, mm. and you don't. Get it, quite the same I say, I say add oil and then go for a walk afterwards. Oh, well, that's kind of my philosophy as well. So basically What's you do the you potatoes first because they take the longest. Yep. Then you do the courgette and lastly again, whoop, lastly again you do the aubergines because they can sometimes also turn the oil a bit bitter. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we've got those going, got that going. Once you've fried everything off, yep. and we've got some that I did earlier, just put that over there for now. Put that one there. Then you need to make your sauce. So you fry everything off and then you make your sauce. Okay. So simple. We like simple. Olive oil, sliced onions, mm -hmm. whole garlic, whole couple garlic. of cans. Why don't you crush it? Oh, because you know what? The garlic, because it cooks in, in the sauce and then it cooks in the dish, the garlic just sweetens. And it and just so when you get a bit of garlic, you get the full flavour of it. And I, well, you know, my children are the smelly kids at school. Brilliant. No one sits next to your <laughs> kids, <laughs> do they? Because <laughs> they the just Buxton, they smell. always <laughs> smell of garlic. So, because there's garlic in everything I cook. So it just needs a, mean, mother, you. a bit of seasoning on this. I bet they don't get cold, Salt. though, do they? Never get cold. My children are never ill. Salt. See? Pharmaceutical but advice as well. And a good, generous helping, as we said, a cinnamon, which again, most people don't put in their savoury dishes, know, but it just brings the out the flavour. But you don't, I think we're also, I think us Brits are quite scared of. God, that's an amazing smell. Oh, yeah. It is. It's and fantastic. And that does. You know, we were talking earlier about smells and things, and that really does. Look that. Reminds, I mean, me, I know reminds me of Christmas. Does it? Yeah. 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 It reminds me of Christmas. Be careful, Greece. careful now, do you? Do you know? Only use a tiny pinch, wouldn't you? No, no. Did you no, know you need really? the one you put in you there? Can be, it's not like nutmeg that turns bitter or overpowers. You can yeah. use as much cinnamon as you like. Really? I love the flavour, so I do tend to use quite so, a bit. So, right now we're ready to go. The layering process, don't we? So these are vegetables that we've already got so fried made. and ready. Right. Do you want to put the first layer, which yes. is the potato? So just layer potato. them nicely. There's no art to this, man. So where just did you where did you learn to cook? Did you grow up in Greece or did you grow up oh, here? No, I was born here. I learned to cook as many Greek girls. I did my apprenticeship in my mother's kitchen. Yeah. And 
I actually learned to cook by default. I didn't really want to learn to cook, but my mother worked. And most young Greek girls had to cook for their family. It's, I used to go back from school, there'd be some, a note on the table, and I would have what to What did cook. your brothers do? Did they all go out and play? They played, yeah, they did what they wanted. So. They just, you yeah. know, and it, oh God, it's just a, such a sexist uh, life. It and you is. know what, I've got two girls and a boy. I'm trying not to carry it on. I do have on. you chain your boy to the stove. Uh, old Smelly Buxton kid. Does he get chained <laughs> to the stove? <laughs> no. He's got two He's got no sisters that run around behind him. <laughs> so aubergines will go next after. Right, okay. I'm just going to put a layer of the tomato sauce. Just to, you know, just keep the flavour going throughout. Oops. And the, the thing I love about Greece, because I spend a lot of time there, it's where I went on um, one of my very first holidays, is there is a huge... Fam sense of family there that I don't think you get in a lot of countries anymore. Um, I remember going there in um, for Easter, and the celebrations at Easter. Easter were is incredible, the most amazing time. But also, we go out with our kids yeah. in Greece and Cyprus. You know, you go to a restaurant, oh, yeah, and for some reason, because the children do do that, they're much better behaved than the British kids. They're used to being out with their parents, and so they right, behave um, better. Yeah, I'm rushing me on there. Okay, go on. on. Come on, Tonya. Sorry, right. So right. Once, and once you've done that, layer, it goes there, in the oven. And then, then, no, then I'm just going to put everything on top there, just like that. I also heard that the tradition in Greece as well at Easter time is for each family to um, roast a lamb, but a whole lamb. Oh, yeah. And if you haven't got a lamb, your neighbour's lamb quite often goes missing. If you've got more than one lamb, in you those watch days, out, haven't you? In, 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 the, in the olden yeah. days, that would definitely happen. Right, that's just ready to go in the oven. Right, we'll pop that one in for our diners to, to try. About 40 minutes. Yep. On about 180. Actually, 25 will do if you're in a rush, and then that's what you've got there. Look at that lovely. Little now this thing. is fantastic as a starter. It's fantastic as a vegetarian main. I tend to serve it cold the next day because the flavours Ooh, really yeah. sink in then. And I serve it as, as part of a mezze dish with some hummus, some tzatziki, some bread, olive oil, and balsamic okay. vinegar. I love the way you're all Greek. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Brilliant, yeah. isn't it? Say it again. Look, look at it. <laughs> and then. Just, nice and you could have it with, with lamb on the side or... Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a lovely side dish. I Whoa. tend, to, I tend to, to serve as a starter. People love it as a, a cold starter. It's just great and mm. it just... Oh, it's good. It's and you stick a bit of coriander on there. It's not as pretty, admittedly, as Aaron's dishes. Or Matt's for that sake. But just, Greek, just, just go about being pretty. And just go bosh. What's Greek for bosh? Nah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> nah. Name the dish, Tonya. Name the dish. <laughs> Iman Baldi. Nah. <laughs> to make Tonya's imambaldi, buy potatoes, aubergines, courgettes, onions, garlic and coriander from your greengrocer. And make sure you have chopped tomatoes and cinnamon in your store cupboard. Wow. How lovely is that? And, and so simple. So easy. So easy and so simple. Aaron? This is my it's favourite sort of food. I, I do Italian food and it's like well, that. The um, Italians copied everything from us. Oh, so yeah, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. It's like the pa um, Melanzani Parmigiano, the layers. Mm, yeah, Same yeah, sort yeah. of thing. And the garlic as well, whole garlic in there. Actually, you no, know, you can put feta cheese on the top if you, if you, if you want to add twist that kind up. of extra twist to it. Yeah. Matt? Just love it. Just love it. I'll do Thank something you. similar. Similar to my restaurant, put it with lamb. I know, mm. you know. Mm. Well but I love that cinnamon, huh? Well, it's nice, it's, it's not overpowering. It's like no, caponata, no. isn't it? Right. Cinnamon in there. Yeah, as I said, the Italians, I'll say this again, learn everything <laughs> from the Greeks. Before there is a war, <laughs> a fenestal, it oh. is lovely. Hello. I liked it that it was like big chunks rather than lots of little bits, and the taste was actually delicious, and I should be putting cinnamon in everything I cook from now on. <laughs> My husband doesn't really like aubergine, but now I've discovered the trick with the putting the salt on to stop the sort of slightly mucusy um, consistency. Um, I shall be doing it at home, and I think it'd be great with roast lamb as a side dish. Legend has it that Poseidon, the god of the sea, and Athena, goddess of wisdom, competed to find the gift most valuable to humankind. Athena's choice, the olive tree, won. And in return, the most powerful city in Greece was named Athena, or Athens as we know it in her honour. Now we at Market Kitchen also value olive oil, and here are our diner's top five Mediterranean choices. Whether it's for salad, bread or pasta, olive oil is an ingredient you really want to choose carefully. Our diners tasted five of the best oils the Mediterranean has to offer and here's how they got on. In fifth place was Carluccio's Mellow Oil from the Puglia region of Italy. It had a fruity flavour but was a little too light for some. 
In fourth place was the Revida oil. It was light all round for its light flavour that would complement other ingredients. The most distinctive tasting was from Sainsbury's in at three. Some liked the strong woody taste but others thought it lacked olive flavour.